Hello everyone and welcome to this week's tutorial on ProRPA.com. This is gonna be our last tutorial on uh, the UiPath RPA tool. We have pretty much covered all the basics of RPA like capabilities provided within UiPath. And uh, today uh, we'll be talking about UiPath Orchestrator. So initially about 24 weeks back when we started with the UiPath tutorials, we talked about the entire UiPath package which includes the UiPath Studio, the UiPath Robot, and the UiPath Orchestrator, right? But up till now, we have been focusing majorly on the UiPath Studio. And you can understand why, because, you know, the whole conceptualization of creating the robots, actual creation, and, uh, you know, the testing and sort of deployment as well is carried out through UiPath Studio, right? So UiPath Orchestrator, what it does is it's like a top management level layer which is gonna reside usually with the management folks and it helps them to effectively manage the execution of RPA bot right like scheduling maintaining logs checking out if everything is working correctly or not that supervision or vision work is carried out through UiPath orchestrator right so um, today uh, in this demo I'm gonna show you how to provision a robot which you have created on the UiPath Studio in uh, in the U UiPath Orchestrator and sort of execute it from there. Okay, so um, I have a program, a very small, you know, working program with me. What this program workflow does is it opens the browser with the URL as Amazon.com and it searches for the book called um, Rich Dad Poor Dad and it enters, right? So that's it. That's the only thing that it does, right? We have dealt with far complex processes, so it's not something highly complex or anything. So I'm going to run this and let's see how it turns out, right? Okay, we got the Amazon.com. That was fast. And we got the Rich Dad Poor Dad search as well. You can see it in the back, right? Yeah, fairly good. Okay, so we are going to close this down. The program works fine. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to provision this robot to the UiPath orchestrator, right? Provision means um, like the steps that need to be followed to make the UiPath orchestrator interact with the UiPath robot that you have created locally on your machine, right? So uh, the UiPath orchestrator is like, you know, the server side thing. So um, you can have multiple robots configured to it and you can manage them at one stop at, at like this one place itself right okay so for this the first and foremost step that we're gonna do is access the UiPath orchestrator right I've provided the URL in the blog post so if you haven't checked it out then please do so because um, and I would ask you to first go through it so that you can know at a high level the legible sequence that needs to be followed to provision a robot right so we go to the UiPath orchestrator and um, I've already created a tenant so um, and I already have one process running so it looks something like this but um, that's how it is right you know uh, this is how it is gonna look like since you might not have any robots so uh, there would be no graphs to show right so to provision a robot you go to the robots in here and um, I have one which is sort of in a bad shape right now I can probably take that out or I mean let it be as is and uh, we need to create a new robot because actually this is a separate uh, work all together so I add a new robot and you can see there is a key that has been shown in here so this key is what I'm gonna access uh, which is is gonna help me access the UiPath orchestrator from the local machine where I'm running my robot where I've created my robot as per se right so um, we have got the we have got the key generated and all okay let's let's stop for a minute and let's open UiPath robot the second app which came with the uh, the robot uh, which came with the you know the RPA package so you open it up and once you do you would see that nothing actually came up why because in the system tray here is where the UiPath robot is gonna be so currently it's, dis it's disconnected so we're gonna go to the settings right right here and give me a second the 
that's like my important thing. So once you have it, you can see that there's a machine name that you uh, that is available within the UI path robot. So you copy this machine name. You put it here, right? And for the key, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the robot key here. In case it didn't copy, now it's here, right? Now you go to UI path orchestrator URL as well, and you put that here. The same, the URL the complete URL okay now the, for the name let's give any name to the robot right I'm gonna give the name as Amazon rich dad poor dad RDPD right and now comes the domain and the username so for domain and username I'm gonna show you where you can find yours in control panel once you go to control panel go to your user accounts again go to user accounts and on the right hand side is where like it's my this is my domain US and this is my username so us is my username and then for the password it's like the password of your system when you logged into your system when you actually um, rebooted your system then if there's a password that needs to be entered then it needs to be in here okay and uh, let's change the type to development bot let's provision this right so it's already is in use um, so well that's a problem so in that case uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply delete this one I already have it provisioned with my laptop I just deleted this robot okay let's do this whole thing again I'm gonna excuse me uh, I'm gonna have to get the second key right and the machine name in here Oops. okay and you can see the provision went in successfully okay and once you've provisioned it in the UiPath orchestrator let's also connect the UiPath robot settings so once you do the connect okay excuse me actually these robots need not be here okay so it's connected right so we have established a connection successfully and you can see that there's a green mark also here between the machine the local machine and the UiPath orchestrator right so one big step done Phew. good now you can see you can also validate it with the green sign and the status as well okay so next uh, we go to the environments tab right so we see here that there's already an environment that has been created actually I'm gonna delete this one let's yeah let's delete this cannot delete this because there are process targeting it okay I mean um, if you have an environment you can use it if not then that's also fine because um, it's a dev environment you can also create one I'm gonna show you it's nothing it's just says name and uh, the type of environment right so um, I could have changed the name at least uh, I can make it okay it doesn't allow me maybe some restrictions with the uh, with the trial version that we have the unregistered version but either ways you can just simply create an environment and this environment so environment is like um, like you know the ecosystem where multiple robots can reside right and uh, you need to have an environment to make e either a single bot or multiple bots working and you could have different environments it's like you know different servers you may have so different ecosystems you can have a dev environment you can have a test environment you can have a production environment you know uh, etc etc these are like simple terminologies that are used in any programming language whatsoever right so now you can see that an environment is also set up it was pretty easy to do now we go to UiPath Studio right because uh, currently if you remember in our UiPath robot uh, which is right here there are no processes available Right, and you gotta make a process available to the UiPath robot so that it could connect uh, with the UiPath orchestrator 
right? Your iPad Studio is like the development area where you created the bot. Now you have to connect it with the UiPath robot, which is again installed locally in your system. And this UiPath robot will interact with the orchestrator. That's how the methodology is. Okay. So you have um, seen in here uh, in this in the in the UiPath Studio, which we are I'm sure pretty familiar with. We go to the setup ribbon, right? And there's a button called publish. Let's do the publish successfully. Okay, as you saw, it has been successfully published. So let's go and check the consider again. You see, there is no process yet, right? Now, there's a catch. You have just published it now, so you go to processes here in the UiPath Orchestrator, right? There's already a uh, project management, uh, dev environment and everything, right? You go to packages and you see all those workflows which are published, which are in published state, right? You see your Amazon sample project, which was just published. That makes sense, right? So um, what you do is once you have confirmed within the packages tab that your uh, sample project is available, you go to processes, you create a new process, right? And in here, you select your package name. The package version and everything, if you, um, well, I probably should have stayed there for a while, but when you published uh, from the UiPath Studio, these package versions and everything got displayed. So, um, you know, uh, that you could have kept a screenshot and uh, verified it, but usually it works. So, I mean, we just went ahead with it. And you can put a description if you want, the dev environment, um, the already configured environment of mine, I've already selected that. So make sure you have an environment, you have the package, and you can put in the description and simply create. So the process has been created successfully, right? We are all good now. The process is all available for us to run, right? So it says the green signal is here to run it ad hoc like just one time or something right you simply go to jobs okay in here in the jobs all you gotta do is simply select the start button select the process and start it it's as simple as that right um, now um, usually what we do is or in any project right or, or let, let me start from the beginning the basic intent of getting an RPA bot is to automate the repetitive manual task, administrative task, which is non-productive, right? So um, usually you won't be doing the jobs. This is just for testing purposes, but you actually create a schedule. So schedule is gonna help you automate the process of execution as well, right? So you simply add a schedule and say uh, uh, rich dad poor dad daily report or something like that daily execution right and uh, you can select the process whichever time zone you want to do and do you want to create it on a monthly basis weekly basis hourly basis and so on right what's the frequency is is what you have to set in here simply create that frequency and you have a schedule running all set right so um, this is a very good basic overview of the UiPath orchestrator and as I've already shown you um, like we have like a lot of a very interactive dashboard also maintained we have queues also so like um, if if there are like multiple bots running then a queue will be maintained and um, it would be like a first in first out basis the FIFO algorithm right so um, whichever was requested first for execution will be executed first when it's done then the second will be executed and so on right a pool is maintained and assets include those um, like data points that you may need to pass on the values between the UiPath program the RPA bot and something that you have saved so what you usually do is in the assets you save your um, login credentials and stuff and uh, because UiPath Orchestrator being a bit secure can um, 
interact only with the specific bots which have been provided the privileges to access that particular information and they can use that to uh, during their execution and and that way your information is stored in a central repository and um, at the RPA bot level the the information is not released or exposed to any vulnerabilities right so um, that is pretty much it do let me know how you like the overall tutorial of UiPath we have concluded all the uh, chapters and all the concepts that we wanted to teach for this one now we'll be starting off with Blue Prism another RPA application so please do stay posted it's gonna be again an interactive session between you and me guys we're gonna love it we're gonna crack the Blue Prism as well and uh, it's gonna be a fun learning and interactive experience at the same time um, free of cost very economical right so on a weekly basis I'm gonna present those topics for Blue Prism and uh, and would love to hear your comments your feedback on this UiPath tutorial and also on the forthcoming tutorials that we'll be providing the content for right um, that pretty much is it um, again please do like share comment and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as our blog and uh, for a thorough learning a one-stop shop for these RPA tools uh, please do check out the CRISPR learning series we have the books on um, Amazon which is available on all marketplaces and also uh, for the video tutorials you can check out Udemy and Skillshare I've also provided the link in the description so uh, please do check that out and uh, let me know if there are any concerns I'm always here to help you out in any possible way I, I could right in case I don't know an answer to a question um, I'm a very straightforward guy so I'm gonna tell that up front and uh, it's gonna be a learning experience for both of us right so um, please do stay posted and happy automating Thank you very much. Goodbye.